If you are building a new PC and you want to use DDR4 memory, what is the best value you can get out of a dual channel kit or should you even consider going with a single 3600 megahertz CL16 stick for example at 16 gigabytes? Well today we're going to be testing all these sticks here and finding out what exactly is going on between the Ryzen CPUs on Zen 2 but also the Intel 9900KS. And instead of testing with an RTX 2080 Ti, which is a GPU that, let's face it, I don't think a lot of people out there gaming are buying because it's just simply really expensive. And so we're gonna be testing with a 5700 XT on the higher end side of CPUs, and then on the medium range with a 3500 X, we're gonna be testing out the 1660 Super. And fear not, if you're on an extreme budget and you wanna know how this I call this the Janko Bedanko combo performs. That's a 2666 megahertz uh, CL19 stick. Uh, what are you gonna get in terms of performance? Pairing that up in dual channel, is it gonna be more beneficial to get say, a higher speed single stick in that case for gaming? Or should you go with what I consider coming into this video, the value king? The 3000 megahertz CL15 or CL16, these are on the market and they're actually pretty good value at the moment. They come in at a much lower price than the 3600 megahertz CL16 stuff, for example. But with that aside, let's get all the testing done and give you guys the results. And after all that testing for you guys, I'm coming back to the table kind of a little bit surprised at how long all this benchmarking took. Uh, there was a lot more to test than I thought it would be and then I got into it, I was like, what about this, what about that? Because I wanted to know going forward, what's the best recommendations on both the Intel and AMD side of things when it comes to these CPUs and memory? And so we'll pull up the first benchmark here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the 3950X versus the 9900KS with the 5700 XT. And this was where the memory pretty much scaled on the Ryzen side with higher speeds. Ryzen liked more speeds and lower latencies. And so the more you gave it on that side of the fence, the better it gave you in terms of FPS. However, the funny thing was, was that the single 16 gigabyte stick was performing really well on its own. I was kind of surprised, and this is actually gonna be a trend that continues on with Ryzen. On the flip side of things though, when we look at the Intel results, the 2666 megahertz memory, the CL19 stuff in dual channel, gave out uh, surprisingly decent results on that side of the fence, whereas as opposed to Ryzen, it really didn't like even dual channel 2666 CL19. So it responded really well to both speeds and latencies more so than actually having the dual channel configuration, which sort of goes against the grain of some people saying that Ryzen's Zen 2's IMC is really weak. I don't think it is. It just works differently to Intel's IMC and that it likes the higher speeds, the higher memory. And so when we give it that, we get better FPS. And we can see with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one CPU's clocked a lot lower than the other in terms of their max frequencies, but Ryzen's coming very close because its IPC is really good. And so we've got 139 versus 137 on the max side of things. But moving on to the next title here, we had Strange Brigade, where the results were pretty much very similar across the board. Did really well on the Ryzen side, on the Intel side, there wasn't a whole lot of a difference here. But of course, Strange Brigade is a title that is really well optimized on PC. This game should be a poster child for other games out there that how well a game can be optimized on the Vulkan engine and give out pretty much great performance across a variety of different configurations. But now moving over to the next title, we got Red Dead Redemption 2. And this is where we saw uh, the memory itself, the actual capacity at eight gigabytes was causing a few issues. Not really big, it wasn't nothing to write home about, but it was compared to the other titles needing more than that eight gigabytes of RAM in the grand scheme of things. And so what we saw here was the dual channel eight gigabytes of 2666 CL19 performing worse than the uh, CL19 16 gigabyte kit. Uh, however, we saw that single channel memory on Ryzen still going hard and uh, also the 3000 megahertz CL15 in dual channel that was doing really well across both fronts 
on Intel and also AMD. But we can see that same trend continuing as before, where Intel likes the dual channel configuration, Ryzen's kind of leaning towards the single channel that's pumped higher. But now moving over to GTA 5, here we saw some really interesting results. And this was to the tune of, you wanna have better memory. And so the worst case scenario versus the best case scenario, there was a massive gap in FPS with the 5700 XT, both on the Ryzen side of the fence and the Intel side of the fence. One thing I will note about this title is they must have updated it recently to uh, get rid of that really bad effect where if you had too high FPS, you got some serious stuttering. I don't really notice that anymore, especially when I was benchmarking. It usually happens as soon as the game loads up the level. And so after about 10 seconds of running around, that stuttering goes away. So it's good to see that GTA 5, they've kind of fixed the engine. But one thing you'll notice here is that the dual channel configuration on Intel is getting a lot better performance than even the single stick higher clocked memory. So still following that same trend, but we can see more of a discrepancy this time around. 8 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes, not really a difference here, but 16 gigabytes versus 32 gigabytes, I did record a little bit of a favor in 16 gigabytes. Then we went to the 3950X, the highest speed memories were doing really well. And of course that single stick. So as the benchmarks go on, that is a really interesting trend we're seeing, but we'll look at Assassin's Creed Syndicate here, the last title for the 5700 XT, where we saw the two sticks of CL15-3000 battling it out again with that single 3600 uh, CL16 on the Ryzen side of things. Intel followed the same trend as we saw before, uh, but it wasn't such a massive gap as opposed to the previous title, especially GTA 5. And after all those benchmarks with the 5700 XT, with the 3950X versus the 9900KS, besides the sheer amount of numbers in those charts, hopefully it didn't confuse you guys, we did see some trends uh, starting to begin. And that was on the Intel side of things, you'll definitely wanna have two sticks of memory and dual channel. And so if you have that, you're gonna reap performance benefits regardless of how slow that memory is. As we saw the 2666 stuff at CL19, that still gave out better scores than the uh, 3600 megahertz in a single stick configuration. However, we move it over to the 3950X, that's when things start to change around a little to the point where it all matters. So having dual channel, of course, is gonna give you more FPS, but having higher speed memory and lower latencies is definitely gonna make a difference. I'd say it would make more of a difference more so than having two sticks of memory when it comes to playing games with a 5700 XT. And so before we conclude this video, however, I will switch over now to the last set of tests I did with a 3500X with a 1660 Super. And this was on an A320 multiple. And what we saw running through the titles here was that the dual channel CL15 3000 megahertz was doing really well. That was sort of like coming in with a sweet spot with the 3500X and the 1660 Super. Shadows of the Tomb Raider pretty much showed the uh, same effect happening. And when we moved through the rest of the titles, uh, GTA 5 and also um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate and also Strange Brigade, we saw that besides Strange Brigade, the 3000 megahertz CL15 memory was really doing well on these sort of mid-range builds. But when we step it over to Ryzen 3950X with the 5700 XT, for example, we found that there was more FPS to be gained by getting a really good kit of memory. Say for instance, the 3600 CL16 in uh, two sticks in dual channel. So after we did that, we scored extra FPS that really wasn't there if we had 3000 megahertz CL15. So basically coming out of all these results here today, I'm gonna to say that if you're on a mid-range build, you've gotta match your budget for a mid-range kit of memory. Because we saw with that 1660 super numbers was that we were losing performance with that 2666 stuff. And it really wasn't good at all for Ryzen. Uh, but on the Intel side of things, when we stepped it up to that 9900KS and the 5700 XT, we saw that we will always wanna have two sticks of memory as opposed to one higher clocked speed of memory. And so there's the difference there. So going into it now, when I'm building PCs and I'm making recommendations, I can always ask the person, what are you going with? Is it gonna be an AMD CPU or is it gonna be an Intel CPU? And so what kind of graphics card are you getting after that? If they're getting a 1660 Super, then I'll say go out and get some CL15, 3000 megahertz. That stuff's great value for that whole combo. But if they're stepping it up to say a 3900X or a 3950X, 
and they're getting a 5700 XT or an RTX 27 Super or even better, then they're going to definitely want to spend some extra money on a good kit of memory. That's the conclusion here. I guess it's no surprise that the budget of the memory should match the uh, budget or I guess the level of the build itself. The last thing that came out of these tests here today was if you're on Ryzen and you've got the choice of say getting a 16 gigabyte really good stick of memory, a single stick, and say for instance you're going with a mini ITX build and you may want to go to 32 gigabytes in the future, having a single really high clock stick uh, will be a stopgap measure until you can afford that extra stick of memory. That's something to consider. And that actually really surprised me going in because I thought the uh, two sticks on the Ryzen side would make more of a difference than it did on the Intel side of things. So when it comes down to it with buying memory and Ryzen versus Intel, the Ryzen stuff you're going to want to get, especially with Zen 2 CPUs, a kit of 3000 megahertz, CL15 or CL16 or better. I'd say that this stuff is coming in at a really good price point and it's a great starting point for people who want to get smooth and good FPS as the numbers here showed today. Though if you're going for the real cheap stuff, I would actually kind of avoid it on Zen 2. As we saw the 2666 megahertz CL19, that stuff is like the bottom of the barrel. Even though it's 2666, you're probably thinking, oh, it's decent. The timings are actually really bad. So trying to overclock this stuff even higher, your mileage may vary, but you may only end up getting this stuff to 2800 megahertz, like the 2133 stuff that I've tried a lot of. And that stuff seems to always top out about those levels at around CL16 at best. So with the 3000 stuff, you may have a bit of extra room for getting that up to 3200 megahertz. And it's still all related though, at the end of the day, to how much you're spending on memory. You're not gonna get a really good bin of memory for very cheap. When it comes to memory, just like CPUs, they do get binned and the better stuff gets sold off for a higher price. So if you come into some 3600 megahertz CL16, that's always going to be a better bin than the 2400 megahertz or even the 3000 megahertz CL16 stuff that you see on the market. Anyway, as with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. But before we go, we got the question of the day from Zaros Master 1979 and they ask, you always make $300 PC with old parts. Can you make the same one with Ryzen? And to answer this question, I have done a Ryzen PC recently on the channel where I bought some parts off AliExpress, came pretty much right around that $300 sweet spot. I'll put the link to that up here where we didn't even use a case at all. But speaking of me getting deals locally on Ryzen, uh, there's just no value there at the moment. Like literally I can go on AliExpress and get Ryzen parts for better value than I can on local used deals. And so with the local used deals, I'm always getting that real old stuff for real dirt cheap and then making really good price performance out of it. Uh, as soon as the Ryzen stuff does start flowing through locally, then you guys can expect a lot more uh, used Ryzen price performance builds. But as it stands at the moment, it's just a really dry market in terms of used Ryzen parts where I'm locally. I have heard from some friends in the US that the market's really picking up there for used Ryzen stuff. So if you're in the US, you'll have some happy times. But as it stands for me locally here on the Gold Coast, Australia, I'm having a bit of a tough time, but I'll do my best for you guys coming up to Christmas. Hope that answers your question and also let us know in the comments section below what you think about all things memory, DDR4, speeds, FPS. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. Also, what kind of kit of memory are you using or what would you go for? And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. And if you're still watching and you're not subbed, sub button, ring the bell is down there and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye.